This is a rack mount temperature monitor that I created, which is installed in a small server room. In addition to a web interface, it displays the current temperature on an LCD and tracks the range, the lowest and the highest temperature. The display will change colors to indicate if it's too warm in the room, which could damage equipment, or too low, which means I'm wasting money on air conditioning. This video will briefly go over the build process. More details and all the code will be available on my website. The system is controlled by a Raspberry Pi. The software is all written in Python and uses WebIO Pi, which is a very powerful open source framework for working with the GPIO pins. This is my first Raspberry Pi project and my first Python coding. It's a great project for getting started with the Pi because it includes GPIO pin states, pulse width modulation, one wire sensors, LCD displays, and internet connectivity. After installation, we need to go to Etsy WebIO Pi and edit the WebIO Pi config file. First, we'll specify the folder where the custom code will be stored. It's called the doc root. I created a subfolder in my home directory called WebIO Pi, and I'll create a subfolder there called test01. Next, we specify the file name for the HTML file that WebIO Pi will serve, and I'll call that index01html. We also have to specify the location and file name for the custom Python code. I'll create a subfolder under test01 called scripts, and I'll create a script file called script01py. Finally, we have to specify the temperature sensor. I'm using a DS18B20. I'll change the default name from temp2 to server room. And that's it for the config file. I'm using a Python module called LCDPy, created by Matt Hawkins, to control a Winstar 16x2 LCD display, which has an RGB LED backlight. This display has 18 pins. Most displays are 5 volts, but this one supports 3.3 volts, which is what I'm using. I have the contrast pin ground for maximum, but you could use a variable resistor to allow adjustments. The RW pin needs to be ground. The RS, the enable, and the data bits 4 through 7 need to be mapped to GPIO pins. Most LCDs only have two pins for the backlight, but since this is an RGB, it has four, and the test can be changed to just about any color you want. Before using this module, you have to define six constants to map the LCD pins to GPIO pins. These are the RS, the enable, and data bits four through seven. There's some other constants that you can set too if you don't have a 16 by two. If you have a different width, you can set the LCD width property to the width of your display. You can also add uh, address lines if you have more than two lines on your display. There are two methods used to change the display text. The LCD byte method sets the line number. On this display, that would be one or two. And the LCD string method, which displays the text. This module doesn't control the backlight. I'll do that from the main Python script. This is the script01py file that contains my custom Python code. First, we import WebIOPy and the LCD module, initialize the module, define constants for temperature and GPIO pins, set up a Boolean to track the two states, either current temp or range, instantiate the temperature sensor. By pulsing the red, green, and blue backlight LEDs of the LCD display, we can generate different color text. After experimenting, I came up with this dictionary of colors for my display. The set color method is used to change the LCD text color. Here are the three main methods controlled by WebIOPy: setup, loop, and destroy. Setup is called when the service starts. I use it to initialize the pins. To save time, I'll paste in the code. I set the LCD backlight pins for pulse width modulation, PWM. Next, the reset switch is set up as an input switch with a pull-up. This means that the pin is normally in a high state until it is pressed and goes low. The pull-up prevents the pin from floating, which can introduce unreliable readings. The loop method is called continuously while WebIOPy runs. Again, I'll paste in the code. I have it set to run every five seconds. First, we'll get the temperature. The getFahrenheit method is provided by WebIOPy and returns the sensor temperature in Fahrenheit. 
Next, we'll update the high and the low temperature. Here the state is toggled between the current temperature and the temperature range. This first branch checks if the reset range button on the front of the case is pressed. The next branch displays the current temperature. The text color is determined by the hot, cold threshold constants. Red if too hot, blue if too cold, and green for normal. The next branch displays the high-low range and functions identically to the previous branch. I vary the color slightly. An orange for hot, a violet for cold, and aquamarine for normal. The sleep method determines how often the loop method is called. The destroy method fires when the service is stopped. Here we just do basic cleanup. Set the pins back to inputs. Finally, I'll paste in a couple of macros that can be called directly from a web page. These methods are prefaced by the decorator at webiopi.macro. The first one is the reset temp range and allows a web user to clear the high-low temperature range. The LCD display will show that the HTTP request was received. The next method, get sensor temp, returns the current temperature and the high-low range. Again, the LCD display will show that this is an HTTP request. This is the HTML file served by WebIOPI. It allows you to monitor and control GPIO pins and devices over the internet. I use the sample HTML file that comes with WebIOPI as a template to create this version. The first button is really not a button in the sense that it can't be pressed. It's just a label that shows you the state of an I.O. pin. This one shows if the reset button on the front of the case is pressed. There are CSS style properties for low and high which can be used to change the appearance of the button depending on the state of a switch. I have it set to orange for low and lavender for high. The next button is interactive. When pressed it will fire a JavaScript method that in turn will call the reset macro in the custom Python script. This is the code that resets the temperature ranges. The third button also fires a macro. This one calls the Python script and returns the current temperature and the temperature ranges. This is a WebIOPI device, which is linked to my temperature sensor. It pulls the DS18B20 for the current temperature and displays it on the web page. It will also automatically update as the temperature changes. Here are the JavaScript methods referenced by the above buttons. They call the corresponding Python script macros. The first one calls the reset temp range. And the second one calls the get sensor temp macro. It also has a JavaScript callback method to handle the return temperature values which are displayed on the page in a message box. Finally, there is the CSS section which controls the appearance and formatting of the web page. I need to make one minor change to the built in WebIOPI JavaScript code, which is located in user, share, WebIOPI, htdocs. The file we're looking for is webiopi.js. I'll edit that file. By default, webiopi uses Celsius. Unfortunately, we don't use the metric system here, so I need Fahrenheit. I'll locate the temperature prototype refresh UI, then find the reference to get Celsius. I'll change that to get Fahrenheit. Now, if I add a temp sensor device to my HTML, the readings will be in Fahrenheit. Now I just change the C for Celsius to an F. In order to start the WebIOPI service, we'll go to Etsy WebIOPI and we'll run as administrator using sudo WebIOPI-D for debug and a dash C for the location of the config file, which is Etsy WebIOPI config. The service is starting now. No errors. And the debug shows that we have temperature readings. Instead of localhost, I'm using the IP address of my Pi because I'm recording on a different computer. The default username and password is WebIOPI and Raspberry. Here we can see the temp on the page matches the temp on the LCD display. If I press get temps, Firefox will return the current and the range, and the LCD shows the web request. If I press the reset button on the front of the rack case, the reset switch label turns orange, 
and the LCD indicates the request. The text color for a reset notification is white. Now when I press Get Temps, we can see that the range has been reset. I can also reset the, the range from a web page by pressing the Reset button. Again, the display indicates the web request and the ranges are cleared. Also notice that the display color has changed from blue to green to indicate the temperature has risen above the cold threshold. I know I went kind of fast in this video, but all the code and more is on my website, rototron.info. Let me know if this video was helpful, and I'll post some more projects.